Shalom. Today we're going to present part one of a study on salt. We know that salt is universally important uh, for many reasons and it has been used all over the world since the beginning of time. The Hebrew word for salt is melach and this might sound like uh, the word you know for king which is melech and a little bit like the word which you know for angel or messenger, which is malach. And we'll be discussing those cognates in the second part of this presentation. Many, many times when you read about melach in, uh, in the Tanakh, it is talking about the Dead Sea or the Salt Sea. Genesis 14.3 All these were joined together in the Vale of Sidim, which is the Salt Sea. Uh, this body of water, or brine as it were, is uh, never called the Dead Sea. In Tanakh it's always called the Salt Sea. Uh, it's not clear how it came to be called the Dead Sea, uh, just somewhere along the way, uh, poetically, because of the fact that nothing will live in the sea due to the amount of salts. There are different kinds of salts in it. Uh, it is called the Dead Sea in uh, modern Arabic. And melach also refers to any kind of ordinary salt. Leviticus 2.13 And every oblation of thy meat offering shalt thou season with salt, neither shalt thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from thy meat offering. With all thine offerings thou shalt offer salt. So as you know, uh, this is, uh, makes the salt very important. It's obviously important to God that we include salt in all our offerings. In Second Chronicles 13.5, Ought ye not to know that Yahweh, the God of Israel, gave the kingdom over Israel to David forever, even to him and to his sons, by a covenant of salt. So there's something about salt which associates it with the covenant. Uh, it's important. We're going to look into all these things. In Mark 9.50, salt is good, but if the salt have lost its saltiness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. So we are expected to have salt in us. Of course, we have to have salt in us because it's necessary for life. Now, uh, even in the wor in English, the word salt shows us uh, there are associated words how important salt is. The word salary comes from the word salt because in fact at one point salt was so valuable that soldiers were paid in salt. And we also have this phrase that a man is worth his salt. In other words, he is uh, worth what you're paying him because he's a good worker. The word salubrious means that it uh, it's, brings health. Uh, the word salad comes from the idea that salted vegetables were so healthy for you and, and very digestible. We have uh, idiom to take something with a grain of salt or with a pinch of salt, a little later variant. And uh, what that tends to go back to is that either salt helps as a digestive aid or it's actually an antidote to poison. The word melech also means uh, mariners, seagoing workers, and uh, we have the same in English. Sometimes a sailor will be called a salt because of the salt in the sea. We see it in Jonah 1.5, then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. Also in Ezekiel 27.9, the ancients of Gebal and the wise men thereof were in thee thy caulkers. All the ships of the sea with thy mariners were in thee to occupy thy merchandise. So salt has many uses and we're going to see how they apply to, to us and uh, to the word of God. Salt obviously gives things flavor.
in Job 6.6, 6, Can that which is unsavory be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? Uh, not much, and people generally salt their eggs, their meat. In Colossians 4, 6, it is written, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. In other words, if we are speaking to people about Yeshua, about the gospel, we should know how to present that in a way that it tastes good to people who are listening, that they will be willing to listen and they will be in, um, enticed to listen more, to take what you have to say seriously, that what you say is digestible. It doesn't do to stand on a street corner and beat people in the head with a Bible. In Psalm 34, 8, it says, O taste and see that Yahweh is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. So we want to have this salty experience on our food and on our words so that we can taste and others can taste the goodness of the Lord. Now salt is used for cleansing and I discovered this while I was uh, researching. There are several places around the world where there are large salt caverns and people go and they just rest in the caverns. It's very good for cleansing your lungs and for um, asthma and other pulmonary complaints. Now this is a story from um, the Chronicles of Elisha, Elisha, the prophet, and the people came to the city and they said, it's a beautiful place here, but the water is no good. So he said, bring me a new cruise and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And when he went forth unto the spring of the waters and cast the salt in there and said, Thus saith Yahweh, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. So the amount of salt that he put in there obviously does not cleanse the entire water everywhere, but it's a token idea. Okay, the salt can be cleansing. It's very clear that Yahweh healed the waters, but we see it as a representative of a healing agent. Mark 49:49. 40, 49. For every one shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. We already have seen that salt is required in every sacrifice. In Matthew 3:11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So the fire is connected to the salt. It's cleansing. When the Holy Spirit comes, he convicts you of your sin so that you can repent and uh, turn around and walk another way. And also in James 8, it says, But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. So it's interesting that the salt is about the taste and the tongue is about taste. And our tongues need to be cleaned. So it's good for us to have salt. Salt can be used to put out fires. Uh, what happens is that the salt is uh, absorbs the heat. For the, for the volume of the amount of salt that's there, it absorbs a great amount of heat. It sucks so much heat out of the grease, if it's a grease fire, which is where you would use salt, that the fire uh, simply can't support combustion anymore. The grease can't because it, the salt just sucks the fire out of it. Again, speaking of the tongue, as written in James, even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a, fire, a little fire kindleth, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Again, we, we should be salt, we should be full of salt, so that our tongue, the fire of our tongue, can be put out. Salt is also used for preserving. This is a pickle. Um, many times when people are studying about the word uh, baptize, baptizo, in, um, in the Greek, they refer to a pickle recipe going back to the 2nd century BC, um, 
a Greek poet and physician named Nicander, and he made this recipe for making pickles, which describes the uh, dipping and baptizing um, process for the pickle. The idea of being baptized is that you stay in the solution long enough to, to absorb the solution. Now he recommended vinegar. Obviously that would not be a kosher pickle. Really good kosher pickers are not made with vinegar. They're just made with brine. There are also large salt caverns where uh, documents can be stored and there's one that stores a lot of Hollywood costumes and film reels because it's very, very dry in these places. The Hebrew word for preserve is shamar. Probably you already know this verb. Job 10:12. Thou hast granted me life and favor, and thy visitation hath preserved my spirit. So God preserves us. Psalm 37:28. For Yahweh loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. So if we're full of salt, we'll be preserved. Genesis 19, 9. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep, preserve, shamar, my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. And in 25, 26.5 we learn, Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept, guarded, preserved, shamar, my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. From promise in Exodus 15:26, If thou wilt diligently hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am Yahweh that healeth thee. In Leviticus 18.5 it is written, Ye shall therefore keep, preserve, shamar my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am Yahweh. Uh, this verse is repeated in Romans 10.5 by Paul. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man who doeth those things shall live by them. So Yahweh's word preserves us. Keeping his statutes per, we, preserves us. We preserve them and he preserves us. Salt can be used for uh, sealing and because of the nature of the crystal, if there's a crack in it, the crystal will grow over and fill in the crack. This is a nice jar of a keg barrel of Tabasco sauce, you, as you can see. It's got a salt seal on the top of it. Going back to the work of the Spirit, 2 Corinthians 1.22, who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. We see that when we receive the Holy Spirit, we are sealed unto Yahweh. Ephesians 1.13, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So we get an earnest deposit on what is to come, and we are sealed to belong to the Father. Salt is naturally recyclable, and uh, mo much of the mining, salt mining, over the millennia has been from uh, taking the salt out of, out of pools of water, uh, seawater, even in the most primitive times, that is one of the ways it, either it was evaporated out by the sun, eventually some um, machines were built to heat the water, but the water evaporates and it leaves the salt. So it's interesting that in Matthew 5.13, Yeshua says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, Wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Uh, it's almost impossible for salt to lose its flavor. You can always distill the salt back up out of the water. And in fact, salt has an infinite shelf life. Salt melts ice. 
And if you live in the uh, northern part of the United States or in the Midwest, you know that when the weather gets bad, they will put salt or a combination of sand and salt uh, on the road to melt the ice. Uh, maybe you've had the unfortunate experience of having lost a car to rust because of this practice. Salt melts ice by lowering the freezing point of the water. It actually interferes with the chemical structure of the ice. In Psalm 147, 17, and 18, He casteth forth his ice like morsels, who can stand before his cold. He sendeth out his word, and melteth them. He causes wind to blow, and the waters flow. So we see in the cold, the word, the salt, can melt the hard heart. In Matthew 24, 12, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Speaking about the, um, the future times from Yeshua's point of view when he was on the earth, we see that there will be a famine for the word and iniquity will increase and then the people are cold. They have no, uh, their hearts are cold. They have no salt, no word to melt their hearts. So that will be the part of the presentation for today. Uh, part two, we'll get into the physics and the biology of salt and see how all that uh, also relates to things of the Father, things in Tanakh. Until next time, Tasimita Inayim al Hashemayim, keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.